Everyone loves a good deal, but you know what's even better? When you find a thousand dollars worth of film cameras for 200 bucks. All right, so we got a pretty fun video lined up for today. We're gonna be doing a flea market slash thrift challenge, but first things first, we are headed over to my girlfriend and I's favorite cafe. This is Dr. Inc. here in SJ, and uh, yeah, they got the best coffee in town. You want to tell them what we're doing today? <laughs> what did you order? I ordered the uh, black sesame tray. <laughs> I always feel so bad when I have to say no to Girl Scout cookies. It's like, man, I'm crushing this child's dreams. You don't have to say that. <laughs> well, I don't want Girl Scout cookies though. He's a, he's a Girl Scout hater. That's no, funny. I'm not. We just bought some Girl Scout cookies. What are you talking about? If you're ever in SJ, check out Dr. Inc. Probably some of the best coffee in town. It tastes like a like a nutty black sesame. The man. back a lot of memories man from when I was younger and just with my mom all right so there are a few cameras at this stall but you know what none of them I don't know if they're not working or maybe they just need a battery but let me see how much he's asking for these Look at this beer can lens right here. That's a really nice lens right there. This one, 35. 35, and then how about for this one? Same price. Same price? Yeah. You make me a deal for two? What's that? Will you make me a deal for two of them? For both? Take two more. Uh, 50? Yo, oh, look at that painting right there. That is insane. How much for this one? Ten dollars each. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I got some film there for sale. You got film? Yeah. Which one? Oh snap! Oh, that's collectible now. Well, how much are you selling this one? Uh, Three dollars each. How many you got? Four of them? Six, I think. Six. You got six of them. Give me ten dollars. For all of it? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Four rolls of Kirkland. Ooh, that'd be a fun little video to shoot, right? I don't even know when that stuff expires. How much is this one? Yeah, 150. 150. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Thank you. Boss, yes. I got 10 bucks. Can I take it? Can I take it? All right, so we came in with 20 bucks. We left with a camera and some film. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm at the drip right now. And then we got some come ups right here, right? So check this out. Got a little Canon chair shot. $5.99 right here. That was insane. This one is the one with the 38 2.8 lens. I made a video about this a long time ago. This is the Auto Boy. And then we also came up on a little travel tripod right here, 749. Aluminum, and it has a ball head too. That's a come up for sure. I'm coming up right here. Oh yeah, sorry, it's gonna be this black case right here. Yo, look at this thing, man. Super 8? Whoa.
All right, y'all, this is day number three. We are headed off to another thrift store. My hopes aren't that high, mainly because it's later in the day and there is a ton of people in this parking lot, so. All right, so check this out. They got a couple of different cameras going on here. It's a little Pentax K1000 kit. But the one I'm looking at in particular is this OM1. They're asking $49.99 right now. And uh, everything looks good. If I do pick this up, I'm gonna find a lens for it and uh, shoot the heck out of this because I absolutely love the Olympus OM cameras. So we'll see. So we are back at it here at the flea. Last time we came here, we actually found like one or two things. There wasn't really much, but thought I'd come back, maybe see what we can find today. Hopefully we can find something good. It's a big old fishing pole. All right, first camera in Canada. We got a Minolta XGM right here. Uh, can't really tell. It looks like the battery is not even working inside of it, but. Boss, how much is this one? Uh, you make $10? $10? What's your best price today? Give me a deal, I walk out of here with this one. How much did I say to you? No, this is the most expensive one. <laughs> 180 for it, for sure. 180? Yeah. Ooh. And look, it works. I know my friend is a photographer. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go look around first. All right, all right, all right. All right. Thank you, boss. He's asking 180 today. I don't know, it's still kind of steep for me, so I'm gonna just keep on looking around here. That definitely used to be a camera case. So you know what, there's cameras here for good deals, but some of them, honestly, I just don't see myself using. I, I'm not like a reseller or anything like that. I thrift cameras for myself, for myself to use. I could be getting a ton of like really good little deals here and there, but honestly, I'd rather save that to someone who wants to start shooting film and just can come here and grab a camera for 10 bucks. To me, that would be much, much better. But look at this neon sign right here. Pet and family portraits, that is fire. What is the other one? Our holiday photos. Huh. We should get that sign. Look at how big this lens is right here. Holy smokes. Photo books? What? I mean, we got some photo books in here. Robert Duano. What? Wait a second. Wait a second. Henri Cartier Bresson. Okay. Robert Duano. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Definitely a photographer's collection. Man and Machine, photographs by Henri Cartier Bresson. What? Ain't no way we found this book here. Olympic portraits, Annie Leibovitz. Color photographs by Joel Myrowitz. No freaking way. I'll tell you. I think the only thing that I honestly really want right now is that Olympus camera, that OM4T. So I'm gonna offer him one. That camera I've actually wanted for a very, very long time, and that would be a good deal. Let me show you how you haggle like a real Filipino. You guys ready? Let me cut the video. Alright, let's go. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, what's up? Give me a good price. I told you a good price. That's your final price? Alright, I'll give you all I got in my pocket. How much is it? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Take it. Yeah. Take it. I told you 130. Dude, what's it? Uh, 100 is not bad, yeah. Right. You want a buck? Yeah, I'll take it. You got it like that? You want a buck? Yeah, I'll take it for 100 bucks. You're getting a good deal on that one. You know that. Yeah. I've been looking for that camera a you long took time. took pictures? Yeah, that's... Okay, yeah, okay. enjoy it then, yeah. Thank you. I, 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 that's, this is my own personal stuff, and, but I never use them. When I bought them, I never use them. Those were expensive. <laughs> thank you, yeah. All right, brother. All right, all right. Thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate it. Enjoy it, man. All right, thank you. From 270 bucks to 100. Man, titanium OM4T. I'll take it all day long. All right. Let me go around. Let me do a quick fire round. I still got a couple of dollars left in my pocket. Let's see what we can get. With the last maybe like 15 bucks. Let's go. Ten bucks? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. 
All right, y'all, so that was a pretty successful day at the flea. And hopefully we could wrap up this entire thrift episode once and for all. This is becoming my biggest thrift haul yet. Thrift, flea, I don't know. Oh my freaking goodness, you guys. All right, okay, so we are finally back home and I gotta say really quick before we even get into it, this is the biggest thrift haul that I've ever had and mostly because uh, this was a compilation of about like one week of thrifting. This was from Sunday to Sunday. But oh my goodness, you guys, we have six cameras, four books, a tripod, a Polaroid, and even some film, you guys. And this all totals up to around a thousand dollars worth of gear. And the best part is we paid a grand total of $200. So, you know, there's deals out there to be had. You really have to be persistent. You have to be very consistent as well as just getting into the right places at the right time. But, oh my goodness. Whew. But you know what? Let's just jump right into it. There is a ton of stuff to talk about. All right. so. I took this out of the packaging already, mainly because I wanted to put some batteries in it and give it a shot, but this I think was the first thrift find and it was this little camera in this Canon case. And folks, we have one of the first cameras I have ever featured on this channel, the Canon SureShot Auto Boy. Now the Auto Boy is great because it's very much similar to like the Nikon L35 AF. This was kind of like Canon's version right here. And it's one of the point and shoots that a lot of people really, really like as just like an everyday kind of point and shoot. And as you guys can hear, this thing is working. Now I picked this camera up here for seven bucks, 6.99 to be exact. And in the condition that it is in, it's in very, very good condition. Almost honestly, like, like new, mint. Uh, these easily go for around 80 to 100 bucks online. Now on that same trip, I actually found this tripod right here. And the, the brand is called Abathid. I have never heard of them before, but one of the cool things about this tripod is that it is very, very small and compact. It's lightweight, but all of the features that you would want in like a professional tripod is on this thing right here. Even a fully functional ball head, which is pretty insane considering that on most travel tripods, especially the smaller ones, they don't have that. And the fact that this thing right here is actually extremely, extremely smooth makes me want to use this as my new travel tripod. So we paid a grand total of $8 for this tripod. Now I looked it up online with this exact brand on Amazon and it goes for around 50 bucks. So for $8 and a new travel tripod that I could take with me everywhere, this is honestly really, really useful. And I'm gonna use this thing like crazy because you know, the tripod that I'm filming on is like 10 pounds. And I remember lugging it through New York on my back on the subway and it just was not a really good thing to do. And you know what? There are just bags and bags of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't even, these aren't even including the books. This is crazy. <laughs> All right, so next up we have the Pentax MG. Now I think I paid $10 for this. I remember haggling with the guy. Um, it was at a flea market and uh, you know, to be honest, with you, I don't even know if it works, but it does have a nice little 50 millimeter F2 lens here uh, in pretty good condition. It is a little bit dirty, so it's going to need a full clean and, you know, adjustment. So considering the condition and the lens as well, I'm going to say it's around like 50 bucks of value. So that is the next camera, the Pentax MG, which I actually really like because it is fairly small. And to be honest, I have never actually shot with this exact model before. Pretty cool find. And, you know, if anybody is interested, I will be giving away one film camera every thrift video. So be sure to subscribe and stay till the very end as well as follow me on Instagram at King Japes. Now on that same day, I came across this Manong that had a ton of like random film and he had these Kirkland <laughs> color 35 millimeter print film that uh, I believe they used to sell way back when. What's the expiration date on this? 2002. All right, 2002. 400 ISO, so I'd probably shoot this at like 100 ISO and it should still be somewhat usable. Now we got four rolls of this stuff right here. I don't know how I'm gonna arrange this on screen, but uh, I remember shooting this a long time ago and something that a lot of people don't even realize is that you know, this film was made in Germany by Agfa. So a lot of people speculated that this was actually Agfa Vista 400, just rebranded into a Kirkland form. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, I paid five bucks for this stuff right here. Now, one of the more random finds of the thrift adventure is this Canon Rebel digital camera. Now, I usually skip on Canon Rebel digital cameras. I just don't really have a use for it. But when I saw this in the thrift store, for $15, you know, I could not resist. And I remember when I was younger and I wanted a camera and I remember asking my mom like, hey mom, can you give me that camera up there? It was this exact one. So 
in a way, it was more of like a sentimental purchase, I guess you would say, uh, something that was very much related to my own background. And I kind of want to just buy some batteries for it, throw an EF lens on it, and then just have it as like a backup camera. Now we're moving over into the good stuff. And what I mean by that is, you guys, there's some finds in here that I literally cannot believe, particularly one camera that I have been looking everywhere for, I actually found at a flea. Sticking to kind of like that Canon theme, we have this next camera right here, the Canon EOS 630. Now, I remember this being called the Canon A2E, and I believe a different market. It might've been like the, the Japanese market, or it might've been US, I don't know. Reminds me a lot of the Canon EOS 3, which I actually used for years with, you know, client work alongside like a digital camera. Uh, all of the features are very similar to the EOS 3, and then the body shape as well feels very similar. But with that said, this is such a handsome camera. I mean, look at the detail details. I picked this up for $10 and look at all of the details. Nice little LCD screen up here at top. And you can't go wrong with a camera like this. You know, you throw on a 50 millimeter 1.8, which you can pick up pretty inexpensively these days. And you have yourself a camera that will meter more accurately than a Leica. All right, next up we have a Polaroid. Now, here's the thing about Polaroid cameras. I am not a huge Polaroid shooter. I think the only Polaroid that I've ever enjoyed was the SX70. But luckily over this thrift haul, I was able to find something very similar. So first and foremost, it comes in this nice leather bag. Actually looks pretty cool. If we can throw Louis Vuitton on this, it'd be like $5,000. <laughs> now grand total, I don't know if you guys could see that, but I paid 13 bucks. Check this out, you guys. This is a Polaroid land camera. And this thing is very, very similar to my SX70 in the fact that you could shoot it in both auto and or manual, which means just focusing. So you could focus manually like this, or you could shift it over into auto. And I remember testing it inside of the thrift store and everything was working. But I think since then, the pack inside of it may have you know gone out already and this does take sx70 film so that is something to keep in mind all right, so moving on into the two cameras that I'm most excited for. These cameras are what I would consider to be the Leicas of SLR cameras. Now, if you guys didn't guess it already, these two cameras are from a company called Olympus. And Olympus made some really, really good SLR cameras. Now, I think the first one that I picked up was this one right here, the Olympus OM-1. And as you guys can see, I did pay $50 for it. Now, you might think I'm insane for paying 50 bucks for a camera at a thrift store, but you gotta understand as well, this is going into my personal collection. And after looking at the camera for quite some time and testing the shutter speeds, I was surprised to learn that everything works properly and it works really well. Now, the OM-1 is a completely mechanical camera, so it doesn't require any batteries. You can just literally change the shutter speeds. I am very happy with this. I've been looking for an OM-1 for forever. Alongside my Leica, I honestly think I'm gonna be shooting a lot with these OM cameras. It's a freaking steal. These cameras go for between $50 to, I've seen them go up to 200 bucks. But the second one that I'm honestly very, very excited for is one that I got a crazy deal on. Now, 100 bucks sounds like a lot of money because it is a lot of money, especially for a camera that is at a flea market. But you guys need to understand what camera we are talking about. So check this out. This right here, folks, is the Olympus OM4T. Now the T in the name stands for titanium because the top plate and the bottom plate are made out of titanium. And honestly, it feels extremely, extremely sturdy. Now to my knowledge, only two Olympus cameras had the titanium feature, which was the OM3T and then the OM4T. And then for Japanese domestic market, it was the TI, which is just something they use there. And then for the American market, it was labeled as T. Same camera, but I want you to go online and just search up OM4T price. We paid $100 for this, but you guys online, these go for anywhere between three to $500, depending on condition. Even body only, for a black OM4T in this condition that is fully functional, the cheapest price that I could find it for was $400. So to say I got a good deal is an understatement, you guys. Now really quick, I wanna talk about the lens that is on front of here as well. Now I actually picked this up at a garage sale. I didn't even get a chance to film because it was raining and and they were trying to like pull all the stuff back into their house. But I came across a garage sale and I picked up this 28 millimeter 2.8 for $25. Look at that, made in Japan right here on the bottom, on the camera and the lens. I'm just super excited to shoot with this thing, you guys. There's gonna be a video on this for sure. So if you guys wanna see a video on it, definitely stay tuned. And last but not least, you guys, we have a couple of different photo books. Now I was completely taken away when I saw photo books sitting on the ground of a flea market. So I picked up four books right here and uh, 
um, they asked for five bucks for this entire lot right here. The total amount of what these books go for is easily over a hundred bucks. But to do a quick little rundown, we have this Brisson book right here, which is from Aperture's History of Photography series. The second book here is called Cape Light from Joel Myrowitz. Now this one on the outside looks like it's in very, very beat up condition. It looks like it may have been on uh, someone's coffee table. You got some coffee stains up there. You even have like a little tear out of the front page because someone needed to write a phone number down and this is the first thing that they saw, of course. But this is a book from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. The Dairyland photo. Look at that thing right there. That is freaking gorgeous. Now the next book I'm actually really excited for because I have never even heard about it until I seen it in person. And this book is called The Man in the Machine by Henri Cartier Bresson. Now this one is a little bit different because there's photographs that I have never seen from Bresson before. Pretty cool book. I got to look through it more. I've only really just done like a quick glance but that's the next book right here, The Man in the Machine. And last but not least, the biggest book and last item in this thrift haul, a book from a photographer that I actually studied a lot when I was first getting started, and that is Robert Duano, A Photographer's Life. But check this thing out, man. This thing is a behemoth. It is freaking humongous and would look good on a coffee table. Uh, and that pretty much wraps up the thrift haul, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just a quick little announcement here. I plan to do a thrift video every other week. So if this is something that you guys like to see, if you guys wanna see more, definitely hit that subscribe button down below and follow me over on Instagram because that's where you're gonna be able to see, you know, if I have any of this gear up for sale or if I'm just gonna be giving them away, which honestly I often do. I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, Minolta gang. Whew.